Hey, what's up, guys, and welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we're taking on the- Hey, Andrew, you've got your own massively successful channel. Hey, and welcome to Macon. Or maybe that should be bacon. Not bacon. Bacon, as in bacon cakes. Again, just to clarify, we're not actually adding bacon to cake. We're just using regular cakes. You know what? Just roll the titles. Hey, and welcome to Making Cakes. As much as I love the effects and sharing what I know, I do seem to watch a lot of food channels on YouTube. And then, while watching this episode of Sorted Food, I had an idea to combine VFX and food. Hashtag cake effects. It may initially seem a weird idea, but there are a couple of benefits. One, cakes are nice. Sorry, misread that. Cakes are a nice, simple shape. And when you record a video of them, they'll be on a tabletop or similar. It's almost like After Effects 3D Camera Tracker was designed for this. And two, Cake Effects is a great way for you to share your VFX skills with family and friends who don't have a clue what you do all day while sitting in front of a computer. This way you can show off, get some easy praise, and eat some cake. But let me caution you, if you do this, be prepared to be asked to do cake effects for the next two years worth of birthdays, winter celebrations, graduations, and so on. Once your family knows you can make something special, they'll want you to do it as an expression of love, which can get really tedious. One of the challenges with cake effects is that this needs to be a quick turnaround. You don't want to work on something for days and days. You want to share your animations while the cake is still fresh. During this video, I'm going to share plenty of tips to make this quick for you to produce amazing results. But the first thing we need to do is get a cake. While you can just buy a cake, again, this is an expression of love. So let's jump into the kitchen. Don't worry, there's a chapter skip option, but here's my never fail recipe for an easy chocolate cake. You'll find lots of cookbooks and YouTubers ready to share their recipes, but I have a tip no one has ever shared which, when I discovered it, made me really annoyed because it makes all the difference. Before we start combining ingredients, I have two loose base cake tins. Mine are not matching, but both are 19 centimeters or 7.5 inches diameter. I've used butter to grease them to make it easier to remove the cakes later, and I don't bother with parchment or baking paper. And I've turned the oven on, preheating it to 160 degrees C or 320 degrees Fahrenheit. My oven is a fan oven, but if yours is a conventional oven, set it to 180 degrees C or 360 Fahrenheit. Now for the ingredients. We need 200 grams of self-raising flour, which is 1.6 cups in whatever weird system you guys in America use. And if you don't have self-raising flour, add two teaspoons or six ounces of baking powder for every 150 grams of plain or all-purpose flour. Add that to a bowl. And ignore the spilled flour Maybe I'll use content-aware fill to hide it. Or real-world content-aware fill, known as wiping. Next, we need 25 grams of cocoa powder. That's a half shot or two-thirds of a barley corn handful. And that white substance on top is one half teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda, or one times 10 to the 23 atoms. Recipe is in the description below, by the way. Next, we add a whopping 275 grams of light brown sugar. That's 0 0.05 Dutch casks for you non-metric countries. And then we add 50 grams of butter, or approximately 10 butter pats. Next, we add 150 milliliters of milk, or 5 fluid ounces. Yeah, all right, imperial measurements for liquids in baking make more sense. I've already cracked three eggs into this and added a generous squirt of vanilla extract. And now I'm going to make a well in the bowl. Not worth it. And now it's time to mix. I'm just using a hand mixer. If you have a stand mixer, you probably already know how to make a cake. Those things aren't cheap. So you'll be way ahead of me. But here's the thing I discovered. Every recipe book and YouTuber I've seen, they all say mix until combined. Some will have you mix different bits together first, then combine. But here's the mixer after 30 seconds. Looks pretty combined to me. If I were to use this, I get very thin, dense cakes. So instead, 
and going to mix for a full four minutes. After some experimentation, I found that for every minute of mixing, the cake rises an extra centimetre, and you get an impressive fluffy cake. My experiments concluded at the four minute mark because I got bored. But if you go further, be sure to post your cake heights in the comments below. Just be clear when posting, don't put mine rose to five inches, or you'll be blocked by some filter or other. Next, we pour the cake batter into the two cake tins. Try to get the amount about the same in both pans. And then pop them in the oven for around 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, stick a knife or chopstick into each cake. If it comes out gooey, bake for another five minutes and try again. Once non-gooey, bring the cakes out of the oven. Remember to turn your camera on while doing this. Then leave for five to 10 minutes in the cake tins before removing. Then place on a cooling rack discover you didn't record any of that, and cover with something clean and leave to cool. Mine haven't risen as evenly as sometimes. I blame you for watching me. So now I'll slice off the tops to even the surface and provide a delightful cookie treat for immediate consumption. Once again, forget to record while you add a filling layer to the top of one of your cakes. I use a supermarket chocolate frosting before stacking the second layer. And now it's time for the crumb coat. Now here's the thing, I usually don't bother with a crumb coat, and only add a topping of melted chocolate. But the whole point here is to make something visually impressive for YouTube Shorts, The Gram, or TikTok. So I decided to follow the process. A crumb coat is a layer of frosting or icing which works like a primer. It seals the cake so that you can apply a clean layer of icing over the top. And I was so keen I went out and bought a turntable palette knife and piping bags and a tub of frosting. What I wasn't prepared for was the huge amount of frosting required. The entire tub was needed for the crumb coat. And when we came to eat it, everyone was scraping off the outer shell. So by all means, frost a cake to look good for the internet, but maybe make a second one to actually eat. As you can see from the final result, we compromise with a thick layer for the top and hundreds and thousands to cover the mess on the sides. It doesn't matter though, because the cake was moist, chocolatey, and delicious, once you scrape the frosting off. Okay, that's the food prep done, now time to film. I shot on my phone held vertically. While this pained me, let's face it, this sort of thing is probably better suited to short form video platforms. And when filming with After Effects 3D Camera Tracker in mind, make sure you move slowly, don't stay in one place, and shoot more than you need. It's weird, but try to record for at least a minute, even if you only plan for 30 seconds. It'll give you options. As soon as you're done, cover the cake and make sure no one touches it. You might need to reshoot. Then bring the video straight into After Effects. So here we are in AE. Import your video directly. I have an iPhone, so it records in the MOV format. In my settings, I have it set to most compatible as I'm on Windows and I'll drag this video onto the new comp button. Go to Window, Tracker. And in the new pop-up, select Track Camera. After Effects adds the 3D camera tracker to the layer and starts processing the video. Depending on the length of your video, this may take a while, but when the blue bar disappears, you're left with these tracker markers. They're attached to the effect, so if you click off them, they'll disappear. If you ever want them to appear in the final render, there is this checkbox. But we don't need that. What we need to do is link up three points to declare a ground plane. Holding shift, select three points on the table. And this funky triangle and target appear. Now right click and choose set ground plane and origin. Nothing major happens, but AE now knows where the ground level is. Keep the point selected then right click and choose Create Solid and Camera. Scrubbing the timeline makes it look a little funky because the solid, if real, would be obscured by the cake. If I select the camera now, you'll see the position values are huge. I'll just hit P so we can see these values change in a moment. You see, these big values can get a little confusing when working in 3D. So let's use a script called Normalize Track by Joe Clay. You have to install it, see my video on how to do that. And once installed, 
you can find it in Window, Normalize Track. Before we run it, select the solid created, hit Enter and rename it to Ground. Then in the Normalize Track panel, select the first option. And see how the camera values are much smaller? OK, next let's select a marker in the middle of the cake. And right click and choose Create Null. And while you expect the null layer to be right there, because we've normalized the values, it's way off elsewhere. So with the null layer selected, go back to the Normalize Track panel and click on the plus button. There we go. Joe, this works a treat. Thank you for creating and sharing. And if we're thanking people for sharing, I'll just say thank you for posting this video on all your After Effects forums. Oh, you hit like too. Thank you. It really means a lot coming from a subscriber. Now that we've got our null layer, we won't need the tracker or normalize panels anymore. Hit enter and rename the null to something like cake top null. And that's all the hard parts done. You just have to decide what sort of decorations you're going to add. I'm going to make a circle for the top of the cake. I can use this as a matte layer for other effects or for recoloring and so on. So I'll go to layer, new, solid. Make a square solid, 1000 pixels by 1000 should do it. And then I need the ellipse tool, which you can find by clicking and holding on the rectangle tool. Of course, if your cake is squared, don't do this step. I'll double click it to add a circular mask to the square solid. Next, I'll make it a 3D layer using this checkbox. And I'll use the parenting tools to link it to cake top null. See how all the property panel properties have updated? These now show the differences from the null layer. So I can zero everything out, and our circle will be in the exact same space as the null. Don't zero the scale, obviously, but scale it down and use the X rotation to make it horizontal, and reposition it as needed using the coordinate arrow thingies. On the layer itself, hit enter and rename this to cake top mat, or something that would make sense in English. Then hit MM to expose the mass properties and feather the circle. But that brings up the square's edges, so use the mask expansion to reduce that. If I feather the mask to 150, I'll set the expansion down to minus 75, or half the amount. Now, at least we have something to see. The track is probably not perfect, but that means whatever other effects we add should be dynamic, fast moving and on screen for a short time. I'm just going to change the layer's colour, so it's easy to spot as a matte layer. And even though this layer is in 3D space, it is still a 2D layer. So I can use 2D effects on this layer to create a transition. I'll go to Effect, Transition, Iris Wipe. Which if I then expand the outer radius, you see gives me a triangle cutout. While I can increase the points, I'm not going to. Instead, I'll set a keyframe for zero on the outer radius. Then move a second forward and set another to 1000. Then I'll go to Effects, Distort, Twirl. And set the amount to 240 and the radius to 50. Which gives us this cool opening. I'll now duplicate the cake layer by selecting it and going to Edit. Duplicate, and then using the matte options, I'll set the top copy of the cake to use the cake top matte as an alpha matte. Nothing appears to happen, but if I solo the top cake layer, we get the cake opening up, and now we can place whatever we want inside, and use the same matte layer, but this time inverted to show it. I use this approach for the dinosaur cake. In Video Copilot's Element 3D, I made a cylinder to rise up and used a tube for the tunnel shaft. But then I made a second bigger tube and then used the included matte shadow texture to hide the outsides. And with Element 3D, Helium X's Helium and other 3D effects, because the camera is already moving in 3D space, there shouldn't be much work involved in making them appear in the scene. If you're wondering how I animated a T-Rex, check out this tutorial 
where I take you through all the steps involved. And for the carrots falling and the stars and balloons, I use the included CC Particle World. I've shared a tutorial before showing how to link CC Particle World to a 3D null, which can make this easier. In both cases, you can use the particle type Textured Disk and point the particle texture to an image or precomp. One of the reasons I suggest recording more than you need is that the tracker isn't always perfect. Being able to trim the video down and still have enough makes a big difference. There's one last tip I can think of sharing, and it might be unique to me. My kitchen has a reflective black tile backboard, which looks stylish, but messes up shots like this because of the reflection. I could spend ages producing the effects for the reflection, but then stale cake. So instead, I created an adjustment layer, made it 3D, parented it to the cake top null, and pushed it back in 3D space to line up roughly with the backboard, rotating it to match too. I then added a fast box blur effect and set the value quite high. To hide the edges, I used the ellipse tool to add a circular mask filling up the layer, which I then feathered massively. This is not a perfect solution, it's downright dirty, but it's quick, solves the problem, and no one who loves you will punk out any issues. Oh, and when I cautioned you earlier about unintended consequences with cake effects, I forgot to include the main one. You will want cake. Often, regularly, and speaking of which, I'm off to grab a slice now. It would be awesome if you would share your creations down below. Maybe if we get enough entries, I could run some sort of contest.